everybody. This is Cody Bateman. Welcome to our Relationship Marketing Podcast show. Oh, very, very excited for the guests that we have on today. And before we get started, just want to thank all of our listeners for listening in and for sharing this show with others. Uh, our viewership is growing rapidly and getting the word out there to a lot of people. Incredible content on this show. I've been very fortunate to have amazing guests come on the Relationship Marketing Podcast and teach us golden nuggets of what relationship marketing really is all about and what uh, today's business tactics should be, how to be effective in today's business world. I love it when I get to interview people that have had adventurous experiences in their life and the, the guest that we have on today is certainly one of those. Uh, not only highly successful in business, but also highly successful as a pilot, as an Air Force pilot. And uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce Colonel Waldo Waldman. He's known as the wingman. Uh, Waldo, welcome to our show today. Well, glad to be here, Cody. Well, it's, uh, it's again, we're going to have some fun. We did a, we did a little joking around in the pre-show and it's going to, we're going to have a good time there today. I want to may I want to share with our guests a little bit about you. Uh, first of all, just uh, your web, your website is what, is it WaldoWaldman.com? What is, what's the website yeah, called? yourwingman.com. I'm known as the wingman. So if you go to yourwingman.com, that's a good way. To so y'all want to check that out. Yourwingman.com or waldowalman.com. Uh, there's some really cool stuff on there. Some cool YouTube features and different uh, speeches that you've done and stuff like that. Uh, high energy guy up there on the stage. Uh, but boy, I'll tell you, some of the stories you tell are absolutely amazing. So let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, who you are. Uh, he's the wingman, author of the New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller, Never Fly Solo. He teaches tactics on how to build trusting revenue-producing relationships with employees, partners, and customers while sharing his experiences as a decorated fighter pilot and sales expert. <clears throat> he's a graduate of the Air Force Academy, holds an MBA with a focus on organizational behavior, He's a former top producing sales manager. He successfully led national sales efforts for several cutting edge technology and consulting firms before becoming a motivational speaker and leadership expert. Uh, Waldo overcame massive, I wanna talk about this too a little bit today, massive claustrophobia and a fear of heights to become a fighter pilot with 65 combat missions and 2,650 flight hours He's deployed worldwide and flew missions in Iraq, Southeast Asia, and Kosovo during Operation Allied Force. He's been awarded five air medals, two aerial achievement medals, four commendation medals, and two meritorious service medals. And the list goes on and on and on. I could, I could scroll this and talk all day about all the accomplishments. But I think that's enough to kind of get us started here so that people understand who we're listening to today. So the wingman, I mean, you know, everybody's interested in when people sit in the seats and they come to listen to a motivational speaker and, and when you're featured, obviously one of the things that, that everybody wants to hear about are your, are your uh, pilot stories. I mean, everybody wants to know combat pilot stories. So just to start off, just give us a little background on how you got into the Air Force and some of the stuff you did there. Well, well, I appreciate the context on that, Cody, because uh, as, as I'm, I'm 50 years old, I married, got an eight-year-old little boy at home, uh, got a buddy of mine, Tarver, he's my video and marketing guy, he's in the office here hanging out. I'm, you know, the more I, I learn about uh, the, the way of the business world and life and marriage and relationships that you focus on, the more I realize that the fighter pilot world that I grew up in is just analogous, just set the foundation for the real world out there because most of us aren't fighter pilots, right? We haven't been in the military. So creating this context about what it is to be a wingman, to be that trusted partner, the, to be somebody that you can go to for help, to create that, that reputation capital within uh, your personal and professional community is so important. And so for me, uh, that's kind of what I focus on now, but as an 18 year old kid, you know, smelling the smell of jet fuel at work with my dad when he was a mechanic at the, at the, uh, at the airlines, you know, when I was a kid, I smelled that jet fuel. I'm like, I got to be around this. I got to be around these planes. And my dad fixed them. I wanted to fly them. I said, I want to join, join the air force, which really ticked him off because he was a Navy veteran. Right. <laughs> so 
So I, 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 I knew that I needed to be around planes. And then it became more than that, Cody. It became about challenge, about being in environments where I could be pushed and uh, motivated and tested. That's just how I am. I think you're probably the same way learn about your background as an entrepreneur, all the things you built that send out cards. You got to be able to thrive and, 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 uh, and crave challenge. And if you don't like that type of environment, you're definitely not going to be a fighter pilot. You sure as heck aren't going to make it into the business world. And even in life, because I think, I think life, uh, the gifts are given to those people who are in the crucible who are out there every day, challenging, pushing, realizing that yesterday's success can't guarantee today's, right? So, uh, so I joined the Air Force. Uh, I went to the Air Force Academy, uh, graduated pretty high in my class, was fortunate to become an instructor pilot after pilot training, and then weaned my way into the F-16. I didn't get it at, at first. I was an instructor pilot at first, and then struggled with some claustrophobia and all that other stuff that we'll talk about later, because uh, Lord knows there was a bit of turbulence in the air and on the ground in my life. Uh, and then... Uh, I did that for around 11 years, joined the reserve, went to business school, and then got into the business world of, uh, of technology sales, mergers and acquisitions, uh, commission only. I just thrived being around that competitive sales environment. And then one thing led to the next, and I started speaking professionally, wrote my book, uh, and I've been doing that for around 15 years, and here I am today. Well, it's sure a delight to listen to you. You know, I've seen you on some uh, YouTube presentations, some of the speeches that you've done. I highly encourage all of our listeners to go to, the, to, to Waldo's website and check some of that stuff up or just check them out on YouTube. And, and again, the book, Never Fly Solo, is something that you need to get. So let, let's, let's go back. Let's just have a little fun going back to the Air Force days. Um, it, first of all, it, what's really interesting to me is it, it seems like flying these highly sophisticated jets – Man, there's got to be a ton of training that goes into being able to fly those things. I mean, how long does it take you to be trained to sit in that seat? I mean, what, what do you have to go through? Yeah, so, and that's a really good point because, I, I, you know, you've heard the saying, attitude determines altitude, right? Everybody says attitude determines altitude. But at the end of the day, I believe attitude plus action determines your altitude. I, I flew and trained with a lot of great men and women. But if they had positive attitudes, were high energy, enthusiastic, full of, of, of vigor, but didn't know how to execute, didn't know how to put their brain and their hands together to deal in a stressful environment, to operate as flawlessly as possible when the missiles are being launched, you will not make it. And so training is, you're spot on, Cody. So after, after four years at the academy, I became an officer and everybody must become an officer before they go to pilot training. Then it's one year of pilot training, then around a year long training of qualification training in that particular airframe. For me, it was at F-16. And then after you've checked out in the F-16, it's another three or four months of qualification training for the particular mission in the theater of operations that you're flying in. For example, I was in Korea, in South Carolina, at Shaw Air Force Base. Some had more air to ground surface attack uh, roles. Others had more of, a, of an air to air role. But you had to be qualified, well-trained on the specific weapon systems and tactics of that particular squadron, and then deploying to Iraq or Kosovo, uh, Afghanistan, night flying, uh, mountainous flying, uh, high altitude flying. Everything was different, and you couldn't expect your previous training in a previous weapon system to facilitate and guarantee your success. It was always new, new tactics, new technologies. So the training, the pressure, the sweat, the constant evolution was what gave us the confidence, the confidence that fighter pilots have to go out there and execute as flawlessly as possible. Um, so, uh, you know, we have a saying, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in battle. And so wow. winners sweat. And if you're out there listening to this podcast and you're saying, Hey, I'm struggling, I'm trying to build my business to be an entrepreneur. I'm trying to, uh, build relationships. I'm working these 12, 14 hours. It's a grind, man. And you got to work your tail off. There's no substitute for it. I don't care what, uh, what bloodline you come from or the past successes you have. It's about evolution. And so that trusting in yourself. And I love when I read about you, Cody, your, one of your philosophies is you have to trust yourself, have a relationship with yourself first. 
and I call it the inner wingman. The man or woman staring back at you in the mirror when you put your flight suit on every morning and you hear the cleared for takeoff call from your customer, your family member, somebody who needs you, do you have confidence in yourself to say, I want that ball, I want the aircraft, I want the expectation on me so that I can kick some butt and take the fight to the enemy and win. So uh, it's about that inner personal development that must be developed, that inner wingman before you can build relationships with other wingmen, men and women in your life that you can trust to execute. Wow. Good stuff. So what does it mean, a wingman? You say a lot about wingman. I remember the show Top Gun. Uh, in fact, here, here's the interesting. <laughs> Jody and I, my wife, uh, we were actually were just talking about this the other night. Uh, our, our first date was in 1980. Well, I got to make sure I got the dates right here now. It was in 1985. Was it 85 or 86? I got to get my story right here. 1986, our first date we went to see the movie Top Gun right when it came out. And we were talking about that the other day. And of course we've seen the show several times and we were joking in the pre-show a little bit, you know, how real is the whole Top Gun story? You know, how, how real is it? But there's, there's scenario in the movie Top Gun about, about being a wingman. And it always stuck, you know, as uh, Iceman and Maverick were always competing and who was the best pilot and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they wondered who, who was the wingman. So what does it mean to be a wingman? What is, what's that all about? So uh, I love the Cody and Jody, by the way, you got to love that. That's great. You know? Thank love, you. Uh, destiny in, the, in that, that relationship. So a wingman, no fighter pilot flies in combat solo. And this is why I wrote my book, Never Fly Solo, because in combat, when you're strapped into a jet, barely able to move in this tiny little cockpit, it's impossible to see your most vulnerable position behind you. So 12 o'clock south front, left, nine o'clock, right, three o'clock. You can't see the enemy coming from your six o'clock because they're sneaking up on you. But when you have a wingman or what I call a wingman, female pilot, sitting at your left nine or right three, it's easier for him or her to look over their shoulder to see what you can't see, to check your blind spot. So this concept of mutual support, this engaged and supporting role, fighter pilots support and one supporting, building the picture, calling out fuel, auxiliary threats, the other one's flying and taking out a target or, or dealing with an air-to-air -air adversary. You have to have a wingman to, to build your, your effectiveness. You can fly solo, but a wingman allows you to be more effective and build a picture and build your situational awareness. And so this concept developed in World War II and the tactics have evolved over the last century or so, allowing us to really, really become more effective. So what I've done, especially after leaving active duty Air Force and then going into the business world was taking this wingman philosophy, this trusted partner who has your back, who calls out the threats, who leaves their ego at the door, who's open to giving and receiving feedback, who cares about you to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear, calling out the missiles, bruising your egos, pissing you off if necessary. That's the type of person you need in your life, the wingman who's going to help you help you succeed. And for the relationships that I've had, Cody, and I'm sure it's been successful in your life, because as an entrepreneur, you wouldn't have received or achieved that success without it. Consolidating those team members and building relationships with those folks, that trust, that connection, which is really the foundation of your relationship marketing philosophy, is really, really key, because you can't see it all on your own. And for the folks that are watching this or listening to this podcast, if you think you got it together, there's a missile that you don't see. It may be coming at you right now and it's going to shoot your butt down and you want people to call out those missiles and you want to have relationships with people that you can call them out and know that that relationship is solid, that they're going to take action on that and, uh, and ultimately achieve success. So that's really the 30,000 foot view of wingman. There's a lot more to it, but that's really the fundamental. I noticed uh, one of your YouTube uh, stories that you did, you talked about it. I think it was titled uh, avoiding distractions or something like that. And you told a very compelling story. I'd like you to share that story about, I, I can't remember the pilot's name, but uh, the story about avoiding distractions and, and kind of ties into this whole wingman concept. Yeah. So a buddy of mine, Jim Ziegler, uh, he was one of my mentors when I first got into the speaking industries in the automobile industry. Great guy, but he coined this phrase. I didn't coin it. They said, beware of distractions disguised as opportunities. 
beware of distractions disguised as opportunities. And many times in life, we're going to have an opportunity that comes up that's really a distraction taking us off the target. So the story was of a General Robin Olds, uh, recently passed away in the last decade or so, one, a legendary uh, fighter pilot in both World War II and Vietnam, an ace, just an amazing individual. So I watched him deliver a, 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 a speech at a graduation of a bunch of F-16 pilots who were pinning on their F-16 wings and get ready to become, uh, become operational. And I, I just was starting the program and I wanted to see these folks graduate you know, what, like, uh, you know, picturing the end in mind. I wanted to see what it was like. So Robin Olds was stating how he was flying, a, I'll make this brief, he was flying a, a formation of F-4s in Vietnam, taken out of target, and the number four aircraft, the, the young wingman, called out a threat on the nose for 20 miles. One, this is four. You never use personal names. One, this is four. I've got enemy aircraft on our nose for 20 miles. Not, uh, Robin Olds acknowledged. A minute or two later, he sees him on the nose for 10 miles. One, I've got the enemy uh, force ship of aircraft on the nose for 10 miles. General Lowell's acknowledged. And then he said, and then they were all flying right, they, could, they were flying right on top of those enemy MiGs. They could all roll in on them at any moment and shoot them out of the sky. And so the number four aircraft said, sir, this is four. Confirm we're cleared to engage enemy aircraft directly beneath us. And General Lowell said, negative, press meaning we're pressing to the target, we're taking out that target that we were told to take out because that was our strategy, that was our mission objective. And so when they came back to the briefing, the debrief, because no mission is ever done, so we take off our rank and name tags and we debrief the good and bad and the ugly, it came time for that young aircraft to kind of share what he saw on that mission. And he said, sir, why didn't we all roll in on those MiGs? We could have all shot them out of the sky. Uh, and obviously, if they turned hot, i.e. were a factor to the, to the, to the aircraft, that they were going to shoot them down, they would have, but they were not a threat at that moment because the nose wasn't pointing. So General Lowell said, listen, son, I, I saw those aircraft 10 miles before you even saw them. But what you didn't see was the enemy force ship of aircraft that are right five o'clock in the sun where we couldn't see them, you know, blinded by the sun, waiting for us to roll in on the decoy so they can roll into our six o'clock and shoot us down. And so it, it brings up a lot of points in that, in that story, Cody, about avoiding those distractions. You know, the mission objective, the strategic imperative was to take out that bridge they were taking out that day, not to go after pop-up aircraft and shoot them out of the sky. And so being focused on the strategy, the targets, the things that are going to move the needle for your business or your life, the big picture concepts, the important yet not maybe the, the mission critical, the important but yet not necessarily the timely or easy targets to take out, that's going to be very, very important as you think about the distractions popping up in your day, the phone calls, the emails that come in, the requests from people to, of your time that's going to take you off of your trajectory your mission for success. And then finally, it also means communicating with your leaders. I, that wingman did the right thing by calling out the threat to general loads. You have to communicate threats that are popping up that your teammates may not see. But then you have to trust the leader who has the big picture on whether or not to take out the target or stay on his or her wing to uh, continue the mission. So that's Boy, kind I'd of love, big picture perspective. I'd love for my staff. I'd love for my staff to hear this. This is <laughs> this would be great because we do we talk a lot about sometimes the leader has the big picture you know has the overall big picture and vision of what's going on and you know there are people that work with you that have specific assignments it's kind of like a wingman you know specific assignments specific things that they're supposed to be looking for and that kind of thing but but they don't have the full big picture Right. And I think that's real important for all of us in business to remember is uh, uh, have a leader and follow the leader and trust the leader uh, because that's kind of how things have to work. And then the leader in turn has to, like you said, uh, listen to the wingman and all the other people that are backing him up. Right. And the mistake, well, I'll tell you, I, what happens yeah, go ahead. If the, if the leader says, hey, I'm the general, I'm the flight lead, you just shut up in color. 
And 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 if then if they're not going to listen to the feedback, those pop up threats, that's when then that's when relationships also can get too old. So it's incumbent upon the leader as well to be receptive, coachable, approachable. Hey, what do you see that I don't? You know, and different ideas from your teammates if they're younger than you, or millennials, or different backgrounds and and and, and passions and skill sets. That's how great teams can collaborate and build better relationships. You don't want your you don't want your clone in your office with you. You want somebody with different ideas, different perspectives, the core, the integrity, the service, the work ethic, the, the uh, accountability, that's not negotiable, right, Cody? You need those, those soft skills. But those technical uh, abilities, the, the communication styles, uh, those are all things that are important to build a holistic view on, uh, on an organization that adapts to change and ultimately grows. Wow, that's powerful. So today, you're you're a speaker of course motivational speaker one of the best out there you got all kinds of speaker awards uh, in the speakers hall of fame and all kinds of really neat stuff congratulations for that by the way very well deserved um you you're also a coach you go and you coach sales organizations and you do a lot of things in the business world today so my question my next question kind of goes in that direction as you're out there and you're consulting with, with organizations, uh, you speak to them on occasion, you coach with them on occasion, what are the biggest distractions you see? What are the biggest distractions in business today that you have to help people, you know, get around? So one of the big things is, you know, the war for talent, Cody, you know, it's hard to extract as much out of people as possible. It's hard to attract and retain qualified personnel. Um, uh, the, the, the war for talent is serious. And so turnover is a big issue, especially for leaders. They train people, they fold them into the system, they put time in, invest resources, training, et cetera. And then the, 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 because people are so uh, busy and so much goes on and they're putting out fires all day that they forget to nurture the relationship side of that. Of that. That's not to say that it's all about the relationship. I, I disagree. I think it's about the mission, doing it right, making sure you're safe, getting everybody home. But all things being equal, assuming that everybody's well-trained, everybody knows their job, everybody's committed. Now it's about nurturing the relationship, showing them that you care, connecting with them as people first and as employees second, knowing that they have their back and you have theirs, except you have their back and they have yours. And so that's a really big thing. And that's that wingman philosophy because it's in order to create operational excellence on the tactical side, you've got to be able to create this, this uh, relationship component, which is really something that you're obviously very focused on. So I, I teach some of the tools for that, the connection from the heart, uh, having each other's back, et cetera. But then also a lot of people are afraid to ask for help. They are afraid to take their mask off. They're afraid to be embarrassed in front of their teammates. They're afraid to admit their weaknesses, seek out advice, because they feel that the culture of the organization is gonna look down on them because you're not good enough, you're weak. And that's definitely not how it was in a fighter squad. And the best guys and gals that were there were the ones who seeked out help, who, who you know, exposed their chest to daggers. Hey, humble me, criticize me, I, I'm messing up here, I wanna be better, why? because we're going to war tomorrow. And if I'm on your wing and you're on mine, I wanna know that you're gonna be prepared and we have each other's back. So obviously, in the business world, it's not life and death, right? But it is the life and death of your business, the life and death of your future, your dreams, the charities you support, and all that stuff. So this relates back to another issue with people finding meaning behind the work the what I call meaning to your mission, the why before you fly. So many folks, and I know you can attest to this, Cody, because you're a hard charger, I can tell, you're a busy guy. If you lose sight of what it is that you're fighting for, the thrill of the hunt, your, your family, the people who need you, the fact that you're truly making an impact on other people in the world, that, that there's something inside of you, the spiritual panache, this, this connection with your, your creator, whatever it is that you believe in, if you lose sight of that, the, the driver, then when the adversities come, when the missiles come, when the panic attacks happen, the claustrophobia that I had to deal with, when that happens, 
It won't be enough to keep you in the cockpit and keep you driving forward, becoming resilient. And so the snowflake generation, in all due respect, that this country is promoting right now is, is not good. You've got to be able to be, have, have your ego bruised and be, be through the crucible and, 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 and deal with a lot of change and pressure and challenge because that's what builds character up. So I, I, I really impress upon people that the, the, the challenges and the pains, the missiles, the scars and battle damage that you're going to get when adversity strikes, that's the, that's the fuel to your future. That's the thing that's going to create more context in your life, give you more confidence in yourself, build more courage to create a greater future for yourself and for those people that you love. Boy, it's powerful. I was recently reading a book called Blue Fishing, and I can't remember. Uh, Sims, I think, is the author. Very brash guy, big guy. He owns a, oh, it's kind of a concierge type of business where he he has a big client base and goes out and does real special things for him. Credible, credible guys. A speaker now does a lot of stuff. He tells a story that kind of relates with what you just said. He tells a story in there about how, you know, he, he finally, after years and years of struggling and struggling, he finally had some breakthroughs and had success. And he got featured in Forbes magazine or something like that. And an old high school buddy saw his article. And the old high school buddy was down on his luck. He had, had a tough life. Things didn't work out for him, that kind of thing. So the high school buddy calls the Sims guy and congratulates him on, on his success. And, and, uh, and then he starts talking about, you know, the problems of his own life. And, and he, he just says, God, I just wish that, you know, I could have some success in my life um, like you. And, and, and Sims, his, I hope I got his name right, blue fish, the blue fishing guy, <laughs> he, uh, he said back to the guy, he says, you got to be willing to be an idiot. The guy says, well, I know I'm an idiot. That's what my price is. No, 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 no. You don't understand. You need to be willing and wanting to be an idiot. The only difference between you and me, my friend, is that I'm willing to go out and be an idiot. I'm willing to go out to places that, uh, where people are smarter than I am. I'm willing to show up and say, I am the idiot in the room, and I'm here to learn. And my goal is to get 1% better after being in this experience. And once I master those things, I'm going to find a new room of people where I'm an idiot in the room again. He says, that's the only difference between you and me is I'm willing to be the idiot. So right. that's kind of, kind of, kind of what you're saying. And, and you do talk about the, the whole snowflake thing that's going on. It's this whole accountability. That's what I you know, love about military training is just accountabilities. It's like, look, you got a job to do and you got to return and report on the job and you either did it or you didn't. And if you didn't, there's going to be hell to pay. And if you did, there's no political correctness in that. It just is what it is. And how important is, uh, I mean, I think it's obvious how important that is in today's business world, but I know you talk to that all the time. It, it, it is critical, you know, and there's tact, respect, um, empathy, appreciation, compassion. Those are very, very critical tools. And you can still have a rubber mallet. You can still critique somebody and reprimand them if necessary. Um, if they're not doing a good job. And by the way, you know, 33% of the fighter pilots and every training program is washed out. Not because they're bad men and women, although sometimes there are some bad folks that make it through. It's very, very rare. But if you're not making the grade, if you're not doing the job, you don't fly. It, it, it would piss me off if I went to battle and somebody wasn't prepared. I don't care how much I liked you, mm -hmm. how much I, I thought of yeah. you as a person, the guy I would play play baseball with, but if you're not getting the job done, you're going to be a liability to the formation. And you don't want that person to be you. So this sense of pride and the fact that, you know, when I walk into the squadron, there's an expectation, a standard. And this is really, really key. I'll send you another video on standards that I did. The standards that you have for your life, personally, professionally, the people that you hang out with, what are their standards when it comes to their moral compass, their health and fitness, their relationships, showing up on time, the the fact that you can count on them. We have very mediocre standards often in the world today. And so when you look at your standards and the people that you could potentially be stupid or, or an idiot in front of, I wanna be around people like you, Cody, and this is why I invest in coaches myself, and I'm very careful who I spend time with on the weekends, like my dad always said. Who are you spending time with? Maybe outside of work, 
holding you to a higher standard, right? Think of your friends, Cody. I guarantee you can name a few guys and gals that will kick your butt, humble you every day, and you want them around. The folks in my life who I respected were the ones that told me I was being a butthead that I was messing up, that I was disrespectful, bruising my ego, making me feel like garbage because they cared about me and loved me more than they tried to make me feel good about life. And so that's the type of people you want in your life. The ones that you could be an idiot in front of and take a risk and have somebody say, hey man, whoa, Cody, Waldo, you're being a wing nut here. Here's how you could get better. And uh, so you want those examples in your life. And also I do it because I have an eight-year-old son want to be an example to him and so the crucibles the challenges the tough things that i go going through in my life that's going to give me fuel to help this young man be a better leader and better human being in life and i assume you you could say the same i don't know do you have any kids uh, cody uh, jody and i have, have three kids they're all uh married off so we're empty nesters now but uh we ha we have three kids and six grandchildren so wow. Um, yeah, our family is amazing and it's grown every day and it's just, uh, that is what life is. Everything we do is for our family and for our posterity. And so that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just so important in life today to have that big why, you know, what is your big why and to go after that. So, yeah, I tell you, man, <laughs> There's just so many things that I'd like to ask you. You know, I keep going back to your pilot days. I keep going back to, you know, being, literally being up in that air. I can't imagine. I'm a, I'm a big adrenaline junkie myself. I mean, I love speed. I'm into horsepower. I've motorized any sport. I'm in it. We're up, you know, at our cabin doing snowmobiling right now. You know, so I, I anything with speed, I really like it. So I, I just have... You know, I have fantasies about being in one of those jets. So you flew an F-16, right? Right, right. I have, I, I have fantasies about being in that F-16 pilot seat and actually having control of that aircraft and doing some of those incredible things you did. You had to have learned, you had to have learned some incredible lessons in that seat. And so I, I just want to ask you, you know, what, what are some of the most impactful life lessons you learned in the pilot seat? So, uh, you know, one of the things that goes back on is, is the preparation piece, you know. A lot of people are afraid, uh, obviously, going to combat is, is, is kind of fear inciting. You think about jumping into a plane by yourself, we're fully responsible for taking off and landing that plane. That can incite a lot of fear. But the thing that gave me the confidence to jump in that plane, to say, I'm ready to go, I'm, I'm ready to be the guy or gal that gets asked to go to war or to to fly a $40 million F-16, it's that preparation piece. And it happens before you get in the cockpit. It happens before the missiles come. It happens before other people ask for help. So this sense of accountability to myself to realize that I've got to put in the time, that I have to train and sweat and continuously prepare mentally, physically, emotionally, and then all those skill sets. So that's very, very important. You know, I have a saying, wingmen never wing it. Right? You can't fly by the seat of your pants. So preparation is really, really key. Another thing is, is the, the, the love of the fight, the love and the passion of what you do every day. Look, I chose to go into the business world when I got out of the military. You talk, if you don't mind, can you stop typing? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. The, uh, thank you. One of the things I learned in the military is, uh, is the passion and drive. You got to love jumping into that plane and being, being exhilarated, knowing that missiles may come knowing that the, the, the adversities will be there for you. And so I became craving of those challenges. Even when I lost an engine or if a missile would come at me or there was an emergency, there was something inside of me that says, yes, I'm ready to kick some butt. And so that exhilaration that came from it, but also obviously the joy of being out there and, and, and fulfilling a challenge and being tested, tested and pushed because in order for fighter pilots and any soldier to be better than they were yesterday, it's going to take drive and adrenaline and risk and, and people pushing you to be better. And so, so that was one thing that I loved about the fact that every day you strapped in with something different, that you were learning, getting better, and that being humble to those mistakes and being the dumbest guy or gal in the room, being an empty vessel and saying, how do I get better, was a key to success in life. And I love that about the fighter pilot world. 
I didn't want to fly for the airlines because it's boring. I wanted to be challenged. And so the love of challenge is important. And also, here's one of the biggest things about, about flying. When you're up there, Cody, and the listeners, and you look to your left and right and see your wingman there, knowing that they're, they're a brother or sister in your life, knowing that you guys are going to fly, fight, and win together. Not fly, fight, and survive. You're there to win. And win stands for work it now. We don't put it off tomorrow. We do it today. Winners work. And to have that incumbent trust that you have each other's back and that we're both in it together, kicking ass together, it's an amazing feeling. And uh, when you come back to the squad, you know, break bread and sip a glass of wine or a cup of coffee and then have this sense of, of, of uh, accomplishment, that's that sense of community that a fighter pilot squad, you know, fighter squad that has that you just can't, you just can't place an, a name on it in, in anywhere else. It's just, I still crave it. You know, you had your team, you still have your team now, Cody, you know what it's like to have this, this victory as a team and the fact that there's a brotherhood and sisterhood and a bond, that culture of trust, that in all things is what I miss more than anything else. Not as, not the flying, but that that feeling of being with a bunch of great men and women who were taking the fight to the enemy and winning, knowing that we were, uh, we were one unified team. I, I, that's something that I crave every single day. And I love being around my, my buddies who are, who are ex-military because we can share some good horror stories and some good fun ones too. So even in combat flying, it's all about relationship. Isn't that interesting? It's very, very interesting. Relationship with yourself first, the trust with right. yourself first as a byproduct of the hard work and your discipline and your sacrifices, then the relationships with others, you know, uh, you, you, you got it, brother. Yeah, no, that's really good stuff. So you talk a lot about the preparation side. I, I'm assuming that you, do you spend a lot of time in simulators like you do simulator flights and stuff yeah. like that. Okay. So, so yeah, so there's a lot, a lot of time spent there. What's the difference of being in a simulator versus being out there for real? You know, what, what is, what is different? Cause there's gotta, there has to be, I mean, I'm sure a lot of the, a lot of the tactics and a lot of things you learn, a lot of the uh, operational things are probably very accurate, but there has to be moments in the air that a simulator would never be able to give you. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, so yes, preparation is important, but at the time, but but there comes a time when it's game time, and sometimes it's only in the game that you learn important things. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. are there examples of things that happened to you in the air that could have never happened in a simulator? Well, a lot of it has to do with real world pressure. You know, when you're up there in the air and experience an engine failure, or you see a missile coming at you, you've got that dynamic of pressure and fear that cannot be replicated in a simulator. And you better learn how to perform under that fear and perform uh, amidst that pressure uh, in order for, for you to be effective. So a lot of times when fighter pilots practice, we call it chair flying, rehearsing in a chair, or doing any type of simulation. We practice under pressure. We don't listen to Tchaikovsky in a library. <laughs> and stuff. We're hammering each other, man. We're hammering each other. You're embarrassed. What are you doing, Cody? What's the, what's the bold face for an engine failure? You're 30,000 feet and 250 knots and an enemy comes up at your left nine o'clock, two miles. What are you going to do? He's carrying two by aim, aim 11s or whatever. What are you going to do? You delayed, you're dead. Get back in the simulator. We're going to war next week. And so that simulation in, is important under pressure. But when you're in that cockpit and feel the fear and you feel the, the physiology, you know, pulling G's, you know, turning at 550 knots and pulling back on the stick and pulling nine G's so that your face feels like it's gonna rip off of your skull and the, and the G-forces and all that, you've gotta operate with that physiological pressure too. Very, very important. Uh, and obviously when the enemy is there and trying to shoot you down, that's a big deal. And then obviously, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the three-dimensional view and then altitude and turning over, it's just very, very different. However, however, you know, the military was very, very critical in developing computer-based training. You learn on the ground how to, how to hit the numbers, read the radar, it's tactical stuff, instrument flying, a lot of things that you can practice on the ground and it saves an enormous amount of time, an enormous amount of fear, an enormous amount of money when you're able to practice this on the ground and get instruction. So when you're thinking about your sales calls, uh, when you're thinking about your business, uh, leveraging technologies and 
this is like obviously we're using Zoom here, video conferencing, YouTube, uh, social media, customer relationship marketing, leveraging technologies and finding an expert, hopefully yourself that you learned it as well. But outsourcing those things is very, very key. So don't be intimidated by technology. Don't be intimidated by simulation and practice. Get people around you, make the mistakes, be the idiot, you know, in the simulator on the ground before you're in the air or in the boardroom or on an important sales call where your, uh, where your, uh, uh, you know, success is going to be riding on that preparation and your confidence. Well, it's incredible. Well, listen, it's, uh, we could go on all day with all these different stories. I got a million questions for you, but I always like to end our show this way. And sometimes we get some of our most impactful messages in in the closing statement I, I i usually save the closing statement just for you i, I want to say waldo the floor is now yours i'm not going to ask you any more questions uh i want you to give us a good four or five minutes of of wisdom from colonel waldo waldman anything that you want to share with our audience in terms of your military career your sales career your coaching career or your speaking career floor is yours go ahead wow well you know, relationships matter. You know, the, the fact that I'm on this podcast with you is a byproduct of some folks uh, you, you know. Uh, uh, the, the connections that you make that isn't, isn't made, those connections don't have to be made when, when they have to be made. I think when you build those relationships because you're a giving person, that you trust people, that you lend your wings away, that you're not just networking, I call it wing working caring about people, finding out ways to help. A lot of what I do in my life all the time is, is I try to help people. I try to give advice. You have to be inconvenienced a little bit in your life to truly be a value to somebody else, build that reputation capital as a wingman for other people, somebody they'll go to for help. When it comes to business, a lot of people will write you a check for that acumen, for that trust and those relationships. So put in the time, a buddy of mine, he says, oh, you got to learn how to say no. Say no, have more valuable time, you know, be very uh, uh, disciplined in your time. And I think there's a lot to be said about that, knowing uh, what to say yes to and what to say no to. But I think before you have the ability to say no, because you're so darn busy and you only have so many hours in the day, you better get used to saying yes. Yes to the volunteer job. Yes to the person who asks you for help. Yes to the fact that you're going to go out of your way to help somebody else because you're, you're that type of person. And so be inconvenienced. It's, it's hard to do that. But build that reputation capital. And here's why it, it, it's important. Not just because, because uh, people can come to you for help and you'll, you can hopefully get paid for it because of your skill set. It's because, God forbid, those missiles come shot at you. Your test results are positive. You're having a down day in your business or you, you're struggling with a relationship issue. Now you've got all these men and women you can call on who are going to pay that, pay that sacrifice that you gave them forward. So my life and anybody's life, when you put that time and, and effort into building those wingman relationships, it's going to help you. Um, and I think it's also important to think about, you know, life is a journey, not a destination. Uh, as soon as you think you're good, as soon as you think you got that, that uh, business hacked, the revenue set, your health and fitness is where it wants to be, your relationship is good, something's going to come at you, a little crosswind, a little turbulence, a little missile perhaps, that's going to force you to reevaluate. And when you reevaluate, you force yourself to become more relevant, more valued to yourself, to the people around you. So continue this passion for lifelong learning. Keep building relationships. Keep asking for help. Keep reading the books, meeting people. Enjoy the journey of growth and humility that's critical to being better than you were yesterday. And this is how you can enjoy the spice of life. Sometimes it's apple spice and cinnamon spice. And sometimes it's chocolate. Other times it's going to be sour and not taste so good. But that's why God gave us taste buds and God gave us the ability to feel heat and cold and, and uh, feel pain and pleasure. That's, that's what makes life livable and enjoyable. But, uh, but be willing to go through those tough times and, 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 and save the good times. Let me tell you, Cody, anybody listening, I spent a year on a remote tour of duty in Korea. I spent months living in a tent and shot at multiple times in combat. And when I came back to the United States of America and kissed the ground that I was on, literally, I had a whole new appreciation of the beauty of this country, 
the people, the freedoms, the fact that we can wake up any day and be the master of our destiny. And so that's the blessing of capitalism, America, freedom, meritocracy. Doesn't mean there aren't going to be buttheads around, but it does mean we have a responsibility not to be the butthead, to be the giver, the worker, till the soil, and to, uh, to really reap everything that our beautiful flag and our beautiful country, regardless of what country that you're in, gives us every single day to be in business uh, with people and to enjoy life despite the missiles and challenges. So that's a, a, a little overview of some of the things that, that came to mind, Cody, and hope that- Well, you give, you give me the chills, brother. That's really cool. I love your patriotism especially, and I think that's so important in today's day and age. Like you said, no matter what country you live in, that patriotism is very, very important. It's a, it's a matter of community and keeping people together. And and like I said, what came out of this show is that even in aerial combat, relationships are the most important thing. Relationships are everything in our business, personal life, and everywhere we go. Um, we have a Grand Summit coming up, Relationship Marketing Grand Summit coming up August 9th in Salt Lake City, Utah. I don't know if our guys have gotten with you, but we'd love to have you come and speak. I don't know if you're uh, I don't know if your calendar will allow that, but uh, we'd love to get you out there to speak to at our event. Uh, just incredible stuff. And uh, appreciate all that you do out there, my friend. Keep on doing what you're doing. And uh, so people can go to Amazon and get your book, uh, Never Fly Solo. I want to remind people to do that. You can also uh, visit Wal uh, waldowaldman.com or, or yourwingman.com and see all of the cool stuff that, that Waldo has. So thanks again for being on the show with us today. Appreciate it very much. And uh, for all of our listeners, uh, appreciate it. Make sure you share this thing, man. Get it out there. Uh, this is very, very good, good stuff. I mean, this is, you know, I, I, I love the whole idea of downloading podcasts and listening to them while you drive somewhere. This would be a great show to listen to. So again, Waldo, thank you very much. And we'll see you all on the next show. Take care, everybody. If you have enjoyed this episode of the Relationship Marketing Podcast with Cody B., be sure to subscribe to the show and leave a review so that together we can get this message, The Power of Human Connection, out to the world. You can find Cody's new book, The Power of Human Connection, on Amazon or the Send Out Cards gift store.